This is a commercially available Martin style acoustic guitar truss rod. It's 12 millimeters across and 10 deep. It sits flat against the bottom edge, which is sealed with masking tape. The flat edge sits up against the underside of the fretboard. In this video, I'm going to be making my own version using 12 by 12 aluminium channel, a furniture end cap nut, a regular nut, a square nut, a barrel joiner nut, a socket cap bolt, and a washer. And of course, some threaded rod. Now, all of these components are available easily in Australia by walking into our favourite big hardware store. At some point in the future, I may experiment with a thin line version using 10x10 10 10 channel, only the corresponding components I'm going to have to order online. So to that end, let's roll our newly minted mobile metal shop down to the other end of the workshop. You know why. We hate, we hate, we hate metal dust, we hate, we hate, we hate metal dust, we hate, we hate how metal dust stains your timber black. The square nut can now fit inside the channel with a simple friction fit. That's going to displace the threaded rod towards the bottom of the neck so that when it is tightened, the whole assembly will bend, pushing up in the middle. I call the furniture end nut the tension nut and a regular hex nut on the inside of it I call the torque nut. I'm going to grind three faces of the torque nut square so that they'll fit inside the channel and prevent the rod from turning. I'm going to cut a notch in between the coupler nut and the head of the cap head bolt to hold a bead of weld to weld the two together. And I'm going to put another bead of weld right there to join the torque nut to the threaded rod. It's going to be pretty obvious I'm not an experienced welder, but I do know one thing. We're welding steel that has zinc on the outside, and zinc is a very bad thing to breathe. So I'm doing it outside, there's a bit of a breeze, and I'm only placing two beads. 
I'm like a super trooper, pigeon pigeon pooper, welding like a total noob. Looks like we've ruined this one. The weld was too hot and it's collapsed some of the uh, hex socket shape. And I can't rebroach that, so we'll just start again. Now the first order of the day is to clean this up so that it's square again and fits inside the channel. Now just clean up and round over the top of the bead. I'm going to grind off these bits of the tension nut so that they're square with the channel. The first step of prettying up the truss rod nut is to clean up this bead of weld. Next I'll facet the hex points off so that we can make this a little bit more circular. I've now chucked it up in my drill and I'm going to spin it against the grinder to get the barrel nice and circular and to also give a bit of a bullet taper to the end of the nut. For this step we actually bring it back to the wood end of the shop but uh, that's the easiest way to kind of polish up and smooth out the finish. The finish is actually quite nice, except there's a bit of a void where the bead of weld was. That's not a problem, it's going to be underneath the truss rod cover. I've just cut some notches in the end which is going to allow me to fold the flaps over to hold everything in place. Now I need to remove two millimetres from the top edges of the U-channel. For that I'm going to use my metal table saw, but unfortunately the blade is not adjustable, the blade height is not adjustable, so I'm going to attach my standoff 
so that just two millimeters of blade extend above. Unfortunately, the positioning of this stop bar was not directly over the very apex of the blade, so it cut a little bit less off one side than the other. So I've got to finish this off by hand. I will move this piece so that next time it cuts both sides the same height. Now I'm going to fold the flaps down at either end. There we are. Now because I have put the square nut in the middle of the channel there, the threaded rod just protrudes a little bit over the top here. So I think I'll grind off the threads just to make it stay underneath that profile at all times. So I'll spray a bit of this uh, water displacement product in here because there is exposed steel and we've ground away the zinc and galvanised protecting. And I'll do that a couple more times over the next uh, few weeks. When all that's dry and this oil kind of forms a bit of a resin eventually. We'll put some masking tape over the top to seal it so that when we glue it in, no glue will get in. Now let's give it a bit of a test. Can you see that curve? We have a functional truss rod. So how does mine compare with this commercial unit? Uh, the obvious difference is that this one lays flat because the underside is a straight line. Whereas mine, where these flaps were folded under, they kind of stick down a bit. Now that's not a problem with my guitars because I put a lovely volute underneath the nut and of course my heels are quite chunky. Truss rods, as you understand, push down at either end, at the nut and the heel, and up in the middle. So it's important that there be plenty of wood underneath. The other thing is that I'd like to improve my welding game so that we don't get these voids uh, in the tensioning nut. But apart from that, I'm very happy with what I've been able to come up with. Music